Hi everyone, welcome back. So in this video, we'll be talking about a very important prerequisite, which is needed uh, before we dig deeper into the concept of like analyzing and designing algorithms. So the very important prerequisite is actually data structures. So we need to have a basic understanding of what data structures are and what kind of uh, different uh, like types of data structures which are there at hand for us to design and analyze algorithms. So in this video, we'll basically uh, look at uh, linear data structures. So we will basically have two types of data structures, linear and non-linear. In this video, we'll focus more on the linear uh, data structures. So to start off, we need to first understand what this word data structure means. So if you just look at uh, algorithms, so in order to like design or analyze an algorithm, you basically, uh, I mean, you'll design an algorithm based on data. So there should be some data uh, around which you'll design your algorithm. So uh, since there is data at hand, we need to actually properly structure that data so that uh, it is like easier for us to design our algorithms. Now, data structures are actually, it's like a scheme of uh, kind of, you know, uh, so data structures. So data structures, uh, you can consider them uh, to be like a scheme in which we kind of structure the related data items. So this can be as simple as like an integer, for example or it can also be like a group of things, maybe like a group of integers. So data structure is just uh, kind of structuring the uh, related uh, data items at hand. Now, if you consider linear data structures, there are two very important linear data structures. One is the arrays and then we have linked lists. So let's talk about arrays. now. If you consider array, array is a data structure which holds um, like all the related data items in one contiguous block of memory. So if you say, let's say you want to create a create an array of let's say size n and it want, uh, you want to store all integers. So what you'll do is you'll basically create an integer array of size 5 and uh, based on the compiler, the integer may store let's say four bytes, for example. So in this case, it will start, uh, like it will actually give you a memory ac like memory location starting from some random address X, and uh, it will give you a conti con continuous block of memory, basically, to store all these five integers. So that is what an array is. Now, the advantages, uh, if you consider array, like you can actually access any uh, item in an array at the same, I mean, it, it takes the same constant time. So it takes O of n. We will discuss about this uh, notations uh, in the upcoming videos. But yeah, like if, if there is an element in, let's say, uh, uh, like if you want to access any element in this array, you would basically depend on uh, the index of the array. So all the index indices, they'll start with uh, zero. Now, since this is an array of five elements, it will be having an uh, like ind index, index four would be the last index basically. Now, let's say we have uh, this array storing these many integers. Now, if you want to access any of these elements, it will take the same amount of time. It will be constant time, basically. Now, this is what an array is. The difficulty with an array is that you cannot uh, delete an element uh, or insert an element to an array. Because whatever array you create, you'll have to first specify how many elements you want in that array, uh, like how many elements you basically want. Now, once you say that the array is initialized with five elements, if you want to add a sixth element, then you would have to basically uh, create a new element, uh, new array of six size, copy all the five elements, and then maybe add one more element to the last uh, fifth index. So this is uh, one way in which you can create new, uh, like if you, you, you can add new indices, but uh, that is a problem because you'll have to create one more copy, all the elements, then add the next element to the next uh, index uh, and same goes with the deletion also let's say you wanted to delete this element then also you cannot directly delete it because it should be a contiguous block so if you delete this then like this part of memory will not be contiguous so you'll have to again create one more array of like size 4 copy all these that is one way to delete and then delete the entire uh, chunk you cannot just delete one element or you can maybe uh, 
like move the elements from here to here but if you do it that way also then i mean the size will again be still fixed so you'll still have one empty slot here basically so deletion and insertion into an array is a it's kind of more uh, time taking process but if you want to access an element in an array that's very easy like it it'll always take constant time regardless of where the element is so that is like a basic uh, introduction on arrays we also have linked lists so just as the name says it is kind of a list which is linked by something so here we had contiguous blocks of uh, memory allocated but if you consider linked lists so if you want to let's say have all these elements in a linked list format then instead of having one element in one index you would basically have uh, something called node so linked lists are uh, basically nodes and pointers now this node will have your actual element the data it will store the data like we'll have multiple nodes storing all your data since this is a linked list all these nodes would be connected through pointers so every node will basically have data and pointer pointing to the next node basically so this is one node it will have the data as well as the pointer pointing to the next node so the last node will basically point to null so this is how a linked list is structured now if you consider uh, insertion into a linked list uh, it's quite easy like all you have to do is just create a new node insert your data into that new node and just simply point the last pointer of this linked list to the new node that's all you do you don't have to actually do all this uh, stuff which you did in arrays it's just playing with the pointers uh, same goes with the deletion also let's say you wanted to delete this node all you have to do is just point this pointer to uh, the next element basically again it's just playing with the pointers so insertion and deletion if you consider linked list it's very easy compared to arrays but let's say you wanted to act <coughs> Uh, yeah so let's say you wanted to access the last element which is zero here so if it was array you, you would simply give the index so you let's say this a was our array you would simply say access the fourth element so it would uh, take constant time and give you the data back but if you want to access the fourth element in this case you would have to actually traverse because there's no index here so you'll have to basically start from the very first node and then keep traversing the linked list and then go to your fourth uh, element basically so traversing and then accessing is the only way to uh, like access any node basically in in linked lists so that is one drawback in linked list but yeah like creation and deletion of any like i mean insertion and deletion of any node is very easy in in linked list compared to that of arrays so if you consider linked list there are like multiple types also in linked list like whatever we just saw this is a singly linked list if you see there is a single uh, pointer pointing to the next node uh, we also have something called doubly linked lists so doubly linked lists what the only difference is that it's kind of same but the only difference is there would be one more pointer pointing to the previous node so you would basically have two pointers so this would be pointing to null and here this would be pointing to null this is a doubly linked list and there is one more called circular linked list so circular linked list is like uh, it is kind of singly linked list but here the last node would basically the pointer of the last node would point to the first node in the list so this is your circular linked list so this was basics about uh, arrays and linked lists yeah just to recap arrays they uh, allocate contiguous block of memory and uh, insertion and deletion into an array is a time taking task but accessing any element in an array is very easy like it is a, it it can be done in constant time uh, when you consider linked lists uh, like insertion and deletion into a linked list is very easy but accessing any element will uh, will have to actually traverse till that index so that is a drawback now considering some more linear data structures so we have talked about two very common data structures arrays and linked lists there are uh, two more so there is one more data structure called stack and there's something called queue so stack and queue these are also linear data structures so if you consider stack so 
you can consider stack um, as a last and first out data structure. So this stack data structure, whatever element goes into this data structure last will be the element to come out of this data structure first. So stack, you can visualize it this way, like a, like a container and whatever elements you put into the stack. So let's say you wanted to put five. So you'll push five into the stack. Then let's say you wanted to push one more element. Let's say you wanted to add six, you'll push the next element. 7 you'll again push into the stack. So there is this operation called push which you do to insert an element into the stack. Now if you see whatever element went in last like 7 will be the, f the element to come out first. So that's why it's called a uh, leaf over data structure last in first out. Now uh, if you want to access the element from the stack you basically perform an operation called pop. So pop will just return it will just pop the very last element in the stack. There is one more operation called top. So this will just peek into the stack and tell you what is the topmost element in the stack. So these are some of the common operations which you can perform on a stack. You can push an element, you can pop an element out of it and you can see what is the top of the stack. Now if you consider Q, Q can be considered as first in first out kind of data structure. Now just to see how Q would be visualized, Q would be something like this. So if you want to add an element to a Q, you would basically add it, uh, you would basically NQ it. So that is an operation which you perform to add an element into the Q. So let's say you added, you NQ'd 5. Next if you want to add let's say 6, you will again add an element. If you want to add 7, again this will go and stand in this Q. Now, the element which went in first will be the element which will come out first. So that's why it's called uh, first in first out. So this operation is called DQ. So you can like NQ and DQ elements from a queue basically. There are two more operations like you can call front operation to see what is at the front of the queue and you can also call this back operation to see what is at the uh, back like back end of the queue. So these were some of the common data structures like linear data structures which we'll come across uh, while dealing with the algorithms. So yeah, we have arrays, we have linked lists, stacks and queues. Uh, in the next video, we'll uh, discuss more on the non-linear data structures basically. So we have multiple non-linear data structures also. Uh, like for example, in this queue also, there is one more type called uh, priority queue, which is a non-linear data structure. It is not necessarily, I mean, it's not exactly the skew. It is uh, not linear, basically. We'll discuss more about uh, priority queues and heaps in the next video. So in the next video, we'll discuss more on the nonlinear data structures. So that's it for this video. Uh, thank you for watching.